let us try to you know, understand uh, how this block diagram drawn for physical system. So the physical system which we are trying to take up is a DC motor. A DC motor is a electromechanical system. Right. So this electromechanical system, how it is drawn in the form of block diagram is what we are trying to see. Right. So now this is a motor. And now if you try to see this is look like a status a stator. Okay, this is uh, replaced with permanent magnet. And this is what the st uh, state the rotor. Okay, this is what the rotor. Right. And then this is what the commutator which continuously changes the polarity. Okay, the winding and all we try to understand in the last class. Right. So this is the days DC motor equivalent, armature equivalent and stator equivalent. So armature has winding. So as you see in the diagram, so armature has winding. So this, this is what the winding. Okay. And this winding is having in a resistance because this is a wire, it is having resistor which is called armature resistance. And the moment you apply voltage, magnetic field will be produced that is a reflect. Or a, this is in the form of a turning okay, of the coil. So then you are replacing that using inductor. Okay, armature inductance. The equivalent diagram of a DC motor armature is. R A L A, and when motor is rotating, then back EMF will oppose the moment. So that is replaced like this. Okay. So up to this point is what we have seen in the last class. Okay. So now this is electrical part, this is mechanical part, and then this is electromechanical part. So electrical part is modeled by using. Uh, electrical part is modeled using Kirchhoff glass. Mechanical part is modeled using what? Newton's law. Newton's law. Okay. So now let's try to understand. All right. So now, uh, uh, now. Block diagram, when you try to draw, you will try to draw it in the form of cause and effect relationship. So, what do you mean by that? So, here cause means you are applying voltage. That voltage is resulting in a current, armature current in the coil. So, cause is voltage, effect is armature. This is a current. Armature current is what the input. Torque is what the output. Torque is what the input. Angular displacement is what the output. And when there is the angular displacement and speed, that causes back here. So everything we have to write in the form of cause and effect relationship. Right. So now if you try to model, okay, now when you when you try to model this, okay, electrical part when you are trying to see, Megha, Megha Nirala, Megha. Yes, sir. So can you tell me, ma, here the equations, electrical part? Which law we have to use? Yes, sir. KVL. KVL. Tell me, ma. EAT minus IATRA. Minus RA into IAT. Okay. Minus LA DI by DT. LA DI by DT. Uh. Minus VBT. Minus uh, VB. P is equal to zero. Zero. Right? So now when you apply Laplace transform, what do you get? E A of S minus R A 
IA of S minus, tell me, LA, hmm, Mega. Yes, sir. IS. Yes. Yes. IS. Yes, Derivative, no. Yes, sir. Uh, minus VB of VB. S is equal to zero. So now what is cause here and what is uh, effect? Mayank? Mayank? I'm marking option if you are not responding. Okay. Mayank? Manideep Sai. Manideep Sai. Manideep? Absent. Meghana? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, Meghana, now what is input and what is output here? Um, the voltage, EFT. So, voltage is what input and what is output? Um, Armature current. Yes, sir. What is transfer function? How do you define transfer function? Output by input. Output by input. Very good. So here output is IA. So when you separate IA, so IA here, IA here. Okay, when you separate IA, right. So voltage EA minus VB of S. IA when you separate by RA. So that is written in the form of, you know, the cause and effect. Now let us take this is what the signal. Voltage is the signal. That results in current. So the relationship of these two is what it is written like this. So I, I think here up to this point, you know, any, anybody has any question? So you understood all the terms, right? This is given in the book of your uh, quo. The A armature voltage, RA armature resistance, RLA armature inductance, EB back EMF, tau M motor torque, theta M motor angular displacement, omega M motor angular velocity and uh, when tm is applied like this if motor is connected to a load load will oppose the uh, motor torque right yes or no yes sir. Yeah. Yeah. So if it yes, Yeah. Tell me. So all the terms are all right, fine. So you sir, uh, yeah. So where is the friction con coefficient? Is that all near the motor? Last one, sir. B BM. Can you repeat, ma'am? I'm not. Uh... BM, last one, sir. Friction coefficient. Ah, BM, BM, BM. This one. Yes, sir. So this BM, see. Uh, if you see here, this is the motor, right? Yes, sir. So this ro uh, this rotor, when it is rotating in uh, stator. Yes, sir. There is there will be opposite friction, right? Yes. That is what the, the friction, you know, which opposes the moment of this uh, uh, rotor is what called, you know, we, we are representing that with the friction and the friction coefficient is BM. Okay. Is it, is it contact force or there's a gap, air gap friction? There is an air gap, but uh, uh, yeah, that is a good question. Now, can you understand like, you know, when motor is trying to move in this particular part okay. yes sir. When, when it is trying to move in this part uh, do you feel like a uh, 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 rotor is just uh, just placed in a stator and there is no contact uh, 
there is a gap on the outside right sir between the two outside there is a gap okay yes but motor you know cross sectional thing when you try to see hmm. this motor is just is placed in stator or there is a contact or no contact there might be some contact because without that how it can be man right sir that, that then there if the contacts exist then the opposing force is what we are trying to take it as friction okay okay sir right. thank you so we are making certain assumptions one is the air gap flux is proportional to the field current and uh, that is psi is equal to k1 if and the produced torque is the product of your armature current and field current okay so the area flux psi and ia k1 k2 ia if and k1 k2 uh, are constants ia you can vary torque will vary if if you vary torque will vary if you are varying ia then that is called armature control dc motor armature current control dc motor and if field current if you vary then it is called field current control dc motor there are two types of motors all right so now another emf is other the assumption is the back emf is proportional to the velocity of the motor shaft so now what we want is we want an objective function angular displacement by armature uh, voltages right so now this is what uh, just now we have discussed so eb of t is equal to la dia by dt uh, plus ra ia plus vb so now constant effect relationship if you try to write so armature voltage is uh, armature voltage is input armature current is what uh, armature current is what output so ea so if you try to write it as a ratio how it can be written as ratio uh, this point is clear now all of you uh, this point is clear right yes sir yes sir okay right now uh, another part is the uh, this mechanical part so when you try to write the mechanical part here so when torque is applied tm of t when torque is applied and the friction torque if you try to consider then tm of t minus dm d by dt of theta m okay d by dt of theta m is equal to jm d square theta m by dt square is it not this armature current produces a star all right okay so here we make some make some so tau is so here tau is k1 k2 ia if assuming k1 k2 constant if is also a making constant because this is a permanent magnet okay so tau m is equal to km ia is this all right okay so this is one relationship and now uh, tau m is input output is angular displacement Okay, output is angular displacement. So when you try to see, there is a torque. Motor torque is applying like this. Frictional torque is opposing. Right. If if I consider the low torque, I'll get dm of t minus dm d theta m by dt minus t l of t is equal to j m d square theta m by dt square. Is it all right? when motor torque is trying to rotate the shaft if load is connected to the motor 
low torque will oppose the uh, torque right yes sir yeah so this is what the mechanical equation is this understood or any questions up to this point clear sir can you explain the k thing in the last slide please which one the k constant 1 and 2 this one yes next yes yeah i'm coming to that point a little later okay, okay. so this is electrical part this is mechanical part so now input is torque tau m of t input is t m of t output is what angular displacement right so when you try to write this in the form of uh, transfer function so t m of s okay right and theta m when you try to take then that is j m s square plus d m s plus theta m d m or b m anything is all right this is start so this is uh, one relationship and now coming to this particular point relationship between torque and armature current this is what you are asking so k1 and k2 what is k1 k1 is the proportionality constant see you consider about stator so stator the air gap flux is proportional to field current is it not so the proportionality yes, constant is k1 okay sir right now uh the produced torque is the product of field current and armature current okay yes sir so that is the product of air gap flux into armature current but air gap flux is what k1 if so and now the proportionality constant if you try to take it as k2 then it is k2 k1 if ia okay okay right now this k1 k2 are proportionality constant and torque is depending upon field current if i vary or armature current i vary so i'm assuming field current is also so this i am trying to take a constant km which is given as motor constant or km is what the constant equivalent a km this is this is understood now yes sir yeah so now this is tm of s is km ia of s so then ia is input tau is output so that is related using this k now one more relationship is the battery is produced is proportional to the other is kb theta dot m or kb d by dt of theta m so when you write laplace transform dd of s is equal to kb yes theta m is that understood now sir one yes. one okay. once explain the part where uh, k1 k2 if is equals to km na k1 k2 are proportionality constant accepted yes sir now the produced torque depends upon or by changing field current torque can be varied and by changing armature current torque can be varied accepted accepted mm yes sir now here if i assume my motor uh, stator is if it is replaced using a permanent magnet then field current can be constant or the stator can be winding this in motors the stator is also having windings okay this is called stator winding stator winding okay sir so if i vary field current torque can be varied torque can be varied and if i vary the armature current torque can be varied okay okay so now yes, i am sir. assuming this stator current is constant stator current is constant 
feed the field current okay right so right. so here yeah. field current is constant k1 k2 are constant so this constant i am trying to take it as km okay okay sir see ba there is a magnetic field from the stator okay so in the confusion which you are getting is this i guess uh yeah if it is north and if it is south pole there exist magnetic field lines accepted yes sir now if i place this now rotor in this stator this rotor is supplied with armature current okay? yes sir so this armature current when it is uh, flowing through the turns of the coil it produces a magnetic field okay Mm. But when I when I place this, I place this, this magnetic field and this magnetic field touch each other. Okay, that's what I explained. No? So this is stator. Right, sir. Now understood. Now understood, sir. Yeah. So now I am fixing this current. Okay. Constant. Now I am saying if I vary this current, speed will vary. Okay. all right so now we are modeling it this is what a physical system and we are now we are trying to model it so now the entire motor became four equations one is electrical part another one is mechanical part another one is electromechanical part and another one is resultant part so the total four equations are there equation number 1 equation number 2 equation number 3 equation number 4 all right up to this point is clear every one of you sir can you explain t alpha of t in the first equation ha huh? sir t alpha of t you, you have written no sir that hey, this is not alpha yaar yeah. low torque yaar yeah. low torque yaar yeah. Okay. If motor is connected with load. So now let us take you know my uh, this is uh, my right hand. This is my left hand. Something band is there is right hand. So this motor uh, you know trying to rotate in this direction. If load is connected, that will be in opposite direction, right? That is what. Yes, sir. Got it. Yes, sir. Not alpha. T L of T. Load R. is the torque due, due to the load that will be no, opposite the due to the load okay okay and now if you try to see the quo book now can you understand this tm and there is a frictional torque so frictional torque will be in opposite direction which is db of t load torque is also in opposite direction okay yes sir So now we try to write now this in the form of cause and effect relationship. So now this is what the first equation. Output is armature current. Input is voltage. So there is another voltage back here. So E A S minus V B S. So that means there is I need a uh, subtractor. Okay. So now if I try to write this in the form of cause and effect relationship, E A minus V B. so there is a differentiator of we call it as subtractor so ea minus vb is what the input and output is ia of s how this is related 1 by la of s plus 1 by la plus ra this point is clear the mathematical operation done on a signal is represented using block what mathematics operation happening here this way multiplication 
ओके वन बाई एल ए एस प्लस आर ए ओके आर्मेचर करंट इज इनपुट व्हाट इज आउटपुट तार व्हाट इज अ रिलेशनशिप टाउ एम इज इक्वल टू के एम आई ए सो हाउ दे आर रिलेटेड टाउ एम सो टाउ एम ऑफ एस बाई आई ए ऑफ एस इज इक्वल टू के एम इज इट नॉट So if I try to write that in the form of a transfer function, then tau m is output, I a is input. It is related with k m. Okay. All right. Okay. Then. मोटर टार इज व्हाट इनपुट आउटपुट इज एंगुलर डिस्प्लेसमेंट हाउ दे आर रिलेटेड फ्रॉम इक्वेशन नंबर टू दिस आई एम रिप्रेजेंटिंग इन द फॉर्म ऑफ ए ब्लॉक ऑल राइट ये लोड टॉर्क इज नॉट कंसिडर्ड Okay. Yeah. Then one more equation that is VB is equal to KBS T time. So when there is an angular displacement resulted angular velocity, so then the back here is proportional to velocity. So the relationship of T time and VB, KBS. okay this is called block diagram of dc motor understood so a block diagram is a pictorial representation of physical system how the signal when it is entering and it is getting modified and then you know it is coming out so there are three uh major elements in drawing block diagram one is block one is block another one is branch point if the signal is going like this the same signal may go to the some other part in the system so it is called branch point so it is called branch point and this is called block and this block is represented by using transfer function and there is a summing point okay if one signal and another signal if they are getting added so we call it as summing point or subtractor it is you know if these two signals are getting added we write plus and plus if the signals are getting you know if this signal is getting subtracted of this we write plus and minus so there are three elements we use block branch point summing point to draw block diagram of physical systems the so block diagram is a pictorial representation of physical system all right so this point is clear all of you any yes questions? sir no questions no Yeah. Yeah. No questions. So now, if you take like G one, G two, and all, so our objective is to find out, reduce all these things, and find out transfer function, which is T M of S by T A of S. This is what we try to do in the next classes. Okay. How to do that? We can uh, do it now. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, what is this? Here, what is the difference between this diagram and this diagram? This is what is there at the load. Load. Load is added here. Load is added. Now, see here. The output here is you know 
armature current is what input torque is what uh, output but there is one more torque which is opposing so which is resultant torque is tm of s minus tl of s that is what it is written here right Yes, sir. Sir, basically, this is like a closed loop system with a load as uh, disturbance, right? Uh, this, is mean, not, this is not closed loop system at all. Okay. This is not closed loop system. A system is represented like this. How it will become closed loop, I try to explain. Okay. Yeah. This point okay. is clear, no? Yes, sir. This is clear. Now, here, S is common, right? I can take 1 by S as common, right? Yes, sir. 1 by S square JM plus uh, BM S. I can take S is common, 1 by S common, right? Yes or no? Here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If I take 1 by S common, then the resultant one is 1 by JM S plus BM, right? Yes, sir. So I can write it as two blocks, one by JMS plus BM and one by S. If I multiply these two, I will get the same. Okay, right now. So, before one by S, it is uh, velocity. It is velocity. And one by S, velocity integration, you do what you get. And that is displacement. Okay. And now, when it is a displacement, you are getting KBS, right? And now, here it is taken from here. So, that's why it is KB. Okay. Fine now? Yes, sir. It's fine. Yeah. Because, you know, see here, this is uh, I, uh, angular... Uh, Velocity is what so your shaft produces back EMF is, is proportional to angular velocity. So here if they take angular velocity, then this is what the relationship. Now this is an open loop system. Okay, this is an open loop system. Now if I put a tachometer here, what is tachometer? Uh, it it measures the angular velocity. It measures the speed of the motor, right? Yes, sir. So if I take this and now I will give it as feedback, if I give it as feedback, so as a control system engineer, what is my analysis? I want to maintain the moment I switch on the motor, the, ro uh, the angular rotations or the speed of the motor has to be maintained at 1500 RPM. So. If I try to draw the block diagram of it, my input is speed and my tachometer is also giving me the speed. So my desired speed is 1500 RPM. Actual speed would be something. So this entire thing will become block for me. Right. So this is what tachometer. This is what the motor and motor may be acted with, you know, load separation. So being control system engineer, my task is to maintain the output speed to be 1500 RPM. If there is a load variation, then output speed will vary. So now if I design a controller, the controller has to maintain the output speed constant. That is what my objective. The moment I switch on the power supply, which causes 1500 RPM, right? So how then this motor takes how much time to reach 1500 RPM is what my analysis understood. Control system, your entire control system, you can bring it here. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah, that is what the objective. So based on the tachometer reading. Uh, the controller will provide an output to the motor, right? Tachometer will provide feedback. Okay. 
if the tachometer speed if it is 1350 we will get an error signal right uh, yes sir like desired speed is not reached not reached so then this controller should act do something and maintain this to 1500 rpm okay sir understood that's what the controller we need to design as a control system in Geneva. Throughout the course, we will be doing the same. What is the time now? 10.43. Right. So now, the commercial motors which are available in the, in the market, they will be you know, giving data sheet. The moment you see the data sheet, you can understand these things. Okay. So there are, you know, this is by using fall, fall bar, uh, one uh, manufacturer, the three, four variants of motors it is given. Nominal supply voltage means what? The voltage which you can apply, okay? Do you know what is the cost of DC motor? Have you seen DC motor any time? seen so many number of times 20 rupees you will get one dc motor i think i had okay so this is what the nominal voltage armature voltage which you can apply what is the next term armature resistance resistance which is RA, right? Now, no load speed. How much RPM? Motor to motor, it will vary. Okay? Yes, sir. No load current. What do you mean by that? When load is not applied, how much current, armature current? That is no load current. Okay? What is this frictional torque? Torque due to stator and rotor friction. That is BM, right? Frictional constant. Yes, sir. Only, yes, sir. Yeah, then, uh, then, then you have back EMF constant. What do you mean by this back EMF constant? KB. KB. This the fourth equation, what we got the constant, right? And the star constant. Now M is what we got the product, right? KM. But KM, no. Understood or not? Armature inductance, armature inductance. What is this? LA. LA. So now, if you get these things from data sheet when you substitute, you will be getting a transverse, right? What is this? <laughs> Is this seems to be a temple, sir? This is a thousand pillar temple. Uh, very actually, Varangal. The moment you say Varangal, this is known for you know the well known structure, which is thousand pillar. A thousand pillar temple is uh, constructed by whom? Kakatiya Kingdom. Kakatiyas in way back in. Uh, 1300, 1300 AD. So I think it is now they are demolished and they are reconstructing. And then one of the professor of NIT Warangal is helping out for reconstruction of this uh, housing pillar. The moment you come to NIT, you can visit because this is just uh, four five kilometers from NIT. So this is this is how the temple look likes earlier. 
thousand you know pillars they used way back in 1300 AD. That is a speciality of Varangal. Okay, all right. So now we will let us. We have ten minutes, so quickly now let us uh, go ahead. So now uh, block diagram is what we are discussing. Block diagram is what pictorial representation of physical systems. So when it is a pictorial uh, representation of physical systems, what we need to do is we need to get a transfer function of it. So now the transfer function of a uh, physical system, you know. Is given, you know, it is a complex system. This is what you try to see. You have you have different blocks. Our objective is to get the transfer function. So then we need to reduce it using block diagram reduction algebra. So now there when we follow certain rules. Right, the rule number one. Now you have two blocks. Right. Now you have two blocks, and this block is having transfer function g1 of s. This block is having transfer function g2 of s. Hey, so electronics engineer always, you know, you have to try to take care of signal, how it is flowing in the system, right? So if you have two blocks, and if the transfer function of the first one is G1 of S and G2 of S, now if you apply a signal A, then here you will you will be getting A G1 of S. The signal is getting multiplied with G1 of S. And here also the output of this, you know, is multiplied with A G1 of S and G2 of S. So if you have two blocks with two transfer functions, now the assumption is the second block is not overloading the first block. If that assumption is right, then what we are doing is right. Okay, so if you have two blocks, then what we can do, these two blocks, if they are in series, then what we do is these two blocks we can reduce into one block. And we try to write it as G1, G2, multiplication with the, the gain of these two, okay? So this is called the first reduction rule. So we have to reduce the block diagram and obtain one transfer function. So block diagram reduction is what we are discussing. Block diagram, okay, block diagram reduction. Understood? Is this point is understood? Yes, sir. So this is rule number one. When then two blocks, if they are in series or cascading, we just multiply the gains of the two blocks. Right. In practical amplifier also, not a single stage amplifier. It is two stage amplifier. So here the gain of the amplifier if it is 10, gain of the amplifier if it is 10, we multiply the gains, right? So that is rule number one. Rule number two. Now, if I have, there is a signal A here, getting diverted here at this point and getting diverted A here like this. Okay. So now this signal is going through a transfer function of gain G1 of S. And this is going through another transfer function, which is of G2 of S. And again, they are, you know, uh, again, they are, you know, connecting here. All right, so now in this case, what we can do is if two blocks, you know, these blocks we can call it as parallel blocks. If these two blocks, if they are in parallel, we can reduce that into one block. Okay, we can reduce this into one block. Then what is the result in one? G1 plus G2. G1 plus G2. So here I'll be getting a G1 of S. And here the signal I'll be getting A G2 of S. So these two are getting added. So A G1 of S plus G2 of S. So if these two, if two blocks, if they are in a uh, parallel, then what we can do is we can reduce those two blocks into a single block and we can add up the gains G1 of S plus G2 of S. All right. Output will be the same, which is A into G1 of S plus G2 of S. Fine. Is the rule number two is fine? Yes, sir. So this is block diagram reduction rule number two. Now, sometimes when we are reducing one block into single block, 
I'll be having a transfer function g1 of s here like this. So here I have a signal a g1. So here I'll be getting a signal a g1 of s. Right. So th there is a branch point from where the signal a is going somewhere in the system. So here I'll be getting a signal a only. So sometimes to reduce the biggest or complex block into single block, then what we need to do is we need to move this um, branch point ahead of the block. Okay. Sometimes we need to move that. So we, we can, I know, uh, we can move it. G1 of S. So here the signal what we are getting is A G1 of S. Right. So when we move it ahead of the block, what is the signal we will be getting here? This point is it is moved here. So when it is moved here, so we moved from here to here, but the signal what we are getting is A G1. But what the signal we should get here? A. A. So then now if I want to get signal A, what should I do? One by G of S. One by G1 of S. So when I move, the rule is when I move a branch point ahead of the block, then we need to multiply one by gain of that particular block so that we will get the same signal. Is this clear? Is this clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this is rule number three. Rule number four. So sometimes when we try to reduce the block diagram into single block, so we'll be seeing examples. Don't worry. So here I have a signal A. I have a transfer function of this is A G1 of S. So here I'll be getting A G1 of S and A G1 of S. So sometimes to reduce the bigger block into single block, we need to move this block before the branch point. So movement of branch point before the block. Before the block. Moving branch point. Moving branch point. Before the block, what should I do? So there is a original system here A and the gain of this is G1. G, G S is common, so generally it is dropped. So here we will be getting A G1. So now this branch point is what we moved here. So but when I move it here, what, what I will get, which signal I will get here? Yeah. But what should I get here? A G1. So when I move a branch point before the block, <coughs> then the, it should be multiplied with G1 of us. Gain of the block. This is rule number four. Understood? Understood? Now, sir, we will, we, will be, we, will, we will be using it. So now let us say there is a control system which is drawn in the form of uh, a block diagram. Okay, so like this. Okay. Right. So. Yeah, there is a control system like this. Okay, so this is plus and this is plus. This is through signals are getting added up. Now, so we you know here input is reference R, output is control. Yeah, 
Thank you. A very high priority interrupt. Okay. Now tell me. So I want to obtain C by R, which is my closed loop transfer function. Right. So now rule number two, what we can do these two blocks. And which this is rule number uh, two blocks they are in cascaded or they are in parallel they are in parallel, parallel. And when they are in parallel what i can do g1 plus g2 g1 plus g2 so these two blocks i can write into one block is it not g1 plus g2 i'll get the same the signal which i get here the signal which i get here is same and then i'll be having one more block g3 here and a block diagram like this. Okay. Yeah. Right. So now, can I make these two blocks into single block? Yes, sir. What I should do? G3 into G1 plus G. So here, this I can do it into, you know, G3 into G1 plus G2. So this entire thing, so this much complex diagram, it became like this into a single block diagram okay so this much so the, here we will be using those rules understood yeah varun what is the time now 10 59 10 59 yeah so we'll stop here and then rest of the rules we'll try to discuss and we'll try to solve the problems in the next class if you have any questions, I'll take up now. Sir, could you explain the third and the fourth rules once again, sir? Fourth rule, huh? This one. Yes, sir. You know, sometimes what we do, uh, we will move the branch point. What do you mean by branch point? Branch point will divert signal from one place to another place. Is it not? So yes, that sometimes we need to do, uh, move the branch point before the block. Okay. And this is before I had a. English. Is this called before or is this called before? Before or ahead? Ahead, sir. This is ahead. We have to move it. Then this is, then this is before, huh? Both words are same or different. Okay, let it be. Yeah, so now here, you know, this branch point is what I'm trying to move just uh, ahead of the block G1. Okay, if you if I want to move, I can move. But thing is, signal should not get changed. Okay, so I am moving it here before the block. So when I am moving it here ahead of the block, what, what, what the thing I will be getting here? So if I move it here, okay, if I move it here, then I am moving it here. Yes, I moved this point to this here. But the signal which I get here is what? A. But what was the signal at this branch point? A G1 office. A G1. So I, I, I should get the same thing. No, if I do anything, I get the same thing. So I should get A G1. So if I want to get A G1, what I should do? This signal I should multiply with? G1 office gain of the block that is rule number four okay okay any other questions please yeah. so if no more questions thank you thanks for uh, your attention thank you sir